Welcome to the Mad Marketing Show on Success Radio USA with host Alex Belding. Brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. Get your car today and start enjoying the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by going to 365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Now let's join our host for today's Mad Marketing Show, Alex Belding. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for joining us here on the Mad Marketing Show. I'm your host, Alex Belding. Um, Be sure to tune in to us. We are on Facebook via Success Radio USA. You can also go to the website, successradio.us. Uh, we invite you to register with us there for free. You'll be able to get a free ebook download as our gift to you. But if you're not into the website thing, we are also on SoundCloud. You can check us out um, wherever you get your podcasts. And um, we are excited today to have Mr. Tom McClintock back with us. Um, we did a show with him in the past all about chatbots. And as things are continuing to move forward in the chatbot sphere, we thought it was perfect time to have him come back and talk more about chatbots. So thank you so much for joining us well, again. Well, thanks for having me back. Uh, it has been an exciting uh, past few months in the chatbot world. There have been a lot of innovations. We're going to talk about some of those today. Um, yeah. I think, I think that, you know, I got into chatbots because of the marketing potential. I think mm-hmm. that that bots are a great way to have those preliminary qualifying conversations with your prospects. Right. And, um, you know, I've always been doing marketing. I got into online marketing about 25 years ago. Mm. It was actually 30 years ago. I got into, I started my first ad agency in college. (laughs) I was doing regular marketing then. There wasn't anything You were the chat bot, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Come to, we called it Phoenix Media. You were the chat bot. Yeah, exactly. That was our slogan. No. (laughs) no. Um, But but anyway, we we did telephone posters in the Mm. dorms Mm -hmm. uh, because there were, I went to school in at Colby College in Waterville, Maine. And it was this beautiful, semi-isolated college, like right up on the hill. Oh, nice. You know, just like you think of when you think of like a New England college. And um, there were all these merchants like breaking their pencils over the fact that they couldn't get access to the student body very easily. Oh, right, yeah. The person that ran the newspaper was the, um, you know, they either wanted to be the sports editor or the news editor. Nobody wanted to be the advertising editor. So oh, that yeah. position wasn't taken seriously. The dirty word, advertising, right? So we <laughs> came up with our own posters. We put them up by all the campus phones. It had mm. student schedules. It had numbers. It, it had everything that you needed. And then we also sold pizzas and cars and stereo systems and stuff like that. So that was, a, that was my first foray. But now we're in a world where bots could do a lot of that and and they do a lot of that already right i mean especially at the enterprise level right right well so uh, what's been going on in the last um in the last couple of months is we've seen a lot more email bots that are helping Mm. out with scheduling so you copy the bot from some service that you pay for um, on your email with six different people trying to figure out when they can meet. Or it okay. could be a whole bunch of different people who are that you just want to meet with in cereal for coffee. Mm-hmm. And it'll figure out, based on the context of the conversation and various keywords and things like that, it'll figure out what the time parameter is and what the location parameter is. And then it will just set that up. Okay. And so you'll get a message saying, you know, everyone who's going to be coming to the meeting will get a message from the bot. Like Clara is a good company that does this. Now. Okay. Um, they'll get a, a, an email from Clara or whatever you want to name your bot um, saying, 
saying, hey, we've scheduled the meeting. It's at, you know, such and such a coffee shop at this time on this date. Right. And here's a calendar invite. Right. And right. you didn't have to, like, track down people and figure it out. Right. You didn't manually have to do the eight, nine back and forth dance. Right. Getting a set, especially if there's multiple folks involved. Right. I've actually been a part of a bot that has done that where we scheduled a meeting okay. between myself and um, uh, and two two people at the same company, right? That, but there's so many things going on. You're right, trying to. So how'd the meeting go? It was on time and on <laughs> schedule, right? <laughs> and we good. knew where to go. It was perfect. That's good. That's good. Well, anyway, none of that is a marketing function per se. But I'm finding that as we collectively dip our toe into the pool of bots. People are trying to figure out, okay, what are some simple functions that will free up time for me? Right. And um, and Google has now taken this to the next level. Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to bring up the announcement of, I mean, it just came out with Google Duplex. It, it came out last week at the Google I.O. conference for, it was for a developers. It f- fascinating thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got uh, it, uh, bunch of different people pinged me on it and I had already been sharing it out on social media uh, as of yesterday morning but I think that this is exactly the type of time saving you know people people worry about privacy and privacy is very important Absolutely. and I think we yeah. should worry about privacy and there are some ethical questions with this and we should we should definitely worry about that so we should talk mm-hmm. about those things but people also worry about time management Absolutely. You know, I mean, we're kind of drowning. I mean, I mentioned email bots. Right. Who doesn't have too much email to deal with? (laughs) You know, I I told my wife last week, I want to just take an email vacation. Right. Which is where I just sit at the computer and answer email. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's kind of what what we've come down to. Everyone is, is batching their messages and everyone is expecting a faster and faster turnaround. Well, and it's the response rate that I think makes a chatbot so perfect because... As as our communication expands, right, and I can I can communicate people to via, via Facebook, I can via email, via phone, via text message, but it's there's so much communication that now as a re- as a receiver of all of these, you know, that's why your email piles up, and you've got a couple subfolders for all the junk email that you go in and check. Oh crap, that's where my confirmation of my order went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you know, and you you start to realize that you are just drowning in communication. And then if you're trying to respond to that access communication effectively and quickly, you're right. Your time is so affected. How many of us have wasted at least minutes? I I don't know how much time I've actually wasted. (laughs) Looking for my, my email, my sent email to see the response that I know I sent only to realize I actually posted it in Facebook. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So or you can, <laughs> this conversation started on Facebook, then it moved to text message. Right, now right. it's on email. All of a sudden it's back to, I mean, how do you keep it all together? Right. So a bot can help with that. Absolutely. And, and I, I do believe that the, the, the marketing aspirations of bots are even more powerful um, but we're starting out right now with with the um, with you know some of these time saving things. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, but that's how you have to start, right? I mean, people need to have a pain point in order for them to to adopt a new technology. Mm-hmm. But I have. Um, you know, as with Webrick goes mad, we build chatbots. I know you with the relationship Martech, you build chatbots, and the, the chatbots can do the mundane task of answering your top ten questions. Right? You, everybody has a frequently asked questions, whether they have it posted, or they keep it in their mind, or they know, or their staff definitely knows. Right. 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 When the phone rings, I bet you ten bucks they want to know our hours. You know, or well, do, if you're a restaurant, do you take reservations? Or that's often how I start the conversation. Mm-hmm. I, I ask people, "Are you having to repeat yourself all the time?" Right? <laughs> yeah. If you're not having to repeat yourself, then good for you. Right. Yeah. But 
most people are. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, there's that information that you post on your website, and you think people see it on your website, and you think that they can read, but they actually don't ever digest it. Mm-hmm. And then they, they have that question right at the register or at the, you know, at the... At the, at the point of impact with yeah. your business, whether it's on the phone, whether right. it's via a contact submission. It's... And, and in, in my space, designing websites, it's so clear that as we, we can build a very simple website, very concise calls to action, people still zip around them and find exactly what they're looking for and make an action. And that's generally, I want to talk to somebody or I want to engage with a way of getting information. And the chatbot is so inviting. Well, it's, it's what it is. I think when people, you know, when, when webmasters or retailers or business owners are, you know, just trying to figure out why do people not understand this stuff that I have to, you know, I've posted it clearly on my homepage. Mm -hmm. What that is a reflection of is not understanding that people are different. Some people want to get information from a web page. Right. Some people want to get information by phone. Right. Some people want to see it in their email. Mm-hmm. Some people want to read a PDF about it. So, you know, it goes on. They want to watch a video on YouTube. It goes on and on and on. And the reality is, is that chatbots open up a whole new channel. Right. Where you can communicate that same information, but through this new vehicle, so that maybe the people that want to get it in a chat style Mm -hmm. will now have it, and you won't have to repeat yourself. Absolutely. And and you become scalable. You, you're able to answer more questions at the same time. And you can add time to your <laughs> add time to your business, right? I mean, you add well, time to how you communicate. Well, speaking of scale, I'm very excited about this uh, Google Duplex thing because talk about freeing up people. Holy time. smokes! Yeah, yeah, it's really it's really fascinating. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right okay. back, and we'll talk more about the big reveal from Google this week. Thanks, Tom. all right. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chuck Bader. And this is Jerry Evans. And you're invited to join us on Profiles of Success, where we feature stories of successful businesses and successful individuals. You can find us on TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, or Stitcher by searching Success Radio USA. Or go to our website at successradio.us. Our current program is available every day, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. We air new programs on every Monday. These are programs which are designed to guide you along your path of success, to provide you with the information, the inspiration, and the motivation to achieve your goals. Right here on Profiles of Success on Success Radio USA. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. Listening to Success Radio USA at successradio.us. 
Success Radio USA is committed to helping you achieve a positive daily approach to your success each and every day. Thank you for listening. to you in part by the 365 Grand Club. If uh, you're looking for a really cool key to Colorado Springs, 365 Grand Club is a great club to be a member of. We are also brought to you by Webrick Goes Mad, changing the way small businesses approach custom websites. Don't get mad, go mad. And today we are super fortunate to have Tom McClintock in the studio with us of Relationship Martech, the chatbot guru of Colorado Springs, and we're super happy to have him here today, Um, particularly because this week announced a huge news in the AI chatbot world with Google Duplex. Tom, do you want to maybe describe what happened? Yeah, I, I kind of look at it as a little bit of a vindication of what I've done for <laughs> the last I've been preaching this years. for so long. It's fine. I saw people come up to me. What is a bot? Yeah, why do you talk about <laughs> these things? Yeah. So, um, so Google had their big developer conference, which they mm-hmm. have annually. It's called the uh, Google I.O. conference. And it was last week. And um, the CEO of Google came up and demoed uh, what they call Google Duplex, Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the next generation of bots. So so bots became a thing really when two things matured. One was artificial intelligence, and the other is natural language processing. And that's the really tough one, right? Yeah. Well, they're both kind of... Yeah, well, they're both insanely (laughs) hard. They're not easy. And it's not even true AI, right? It's still machine learning. We have to be careful. Yeah, well, so natural language processing is not AI. Right. It's Mm -hmm. just... How do we get computers to talk and, more importantly, understand right. how, you know, like Human humans. communication. Yeah. Right. So, for example, in just in this paragraph, I said, yeah, like three times right. or something. So that might, you know, you wouldn't type that into a Correct. Google search query. Although right. now you, you know. Well, if you're doing you voice can. to search, right, you yeah, might be you populating do that. those searches. You do that. So, so the whole, the whole, um, the whole object has been how do we get a computer to interact much more seamlessly in a voice environment with, a with humans right and so now they've they've done that so well and we've actually put together um, a clip from from that we're going to have an audio clip for our podcast listeners here but let's break this down real quick because this is a conversation between Google scheduling a hair salon appointment mm-hmm. and there's a lot to there's a lot to dissect in this right you have to talk to a human Human, you have to request a date time. You have to negotiate that time. Um, and so if our producer is ready, um, we're going to go ahead and just, just bear in mind that there is a human. She is the salon talking to Google Duplex which and is, scheduling a hair, a hair appointment. So here is that clip. Makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. How happen I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Okay, what's her first name? The first name 
first name is Lisa? Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Perfect. And then that's, a, I think that's astounding. Yeah. Well, there were a couple of things that I had to get used to. First of all, um, you know, I'm, I have Google Home at home. Mm hmm. And we use it all the time. And okay. My wife is not wild about it. She thinks it's like having another person <laughs> it's a in the creepy, house. Right? Yeah, she won't even talk to She's it. afraid it's listening. She'll ask all me the time. to tell oh, right. it to turn down the music. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my son and I really, you know, and he's always, you know, he wants to call grandma using Google Home and, right. and so forth. Um, but this is not the standard Google Home voice that we've gotten used to. This mm. is a new voice. And we'll hear another new voice uh, a, yeah, little a little bit later. Yeah, a little bit later in the show, yeah. Um, so that's one thing to get used to. The second thing, and this is where everybody cheered, um, when Google Duplex said, mm-hmm. Right, it was like, that is incredible. Yeah, so how do you how do you do that? And, you know, there were some other things in that conversation. For example, um, you know, the the... Bot is tasked to call the salon and book a hairstyling appointment for between 10 and 12 on Wednesday. Right. Well, she tries 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work. It doesn't work. And then, then it's like, all right, well, let me expand the parameter to 10 to 12. And she gets this question back. Which right. Is, she gets a determiner. What, what do you want? What? Yeah. What kind of appointment? Which I would have thought would have tripped up the bot. Right. You know, like, totally I don't know. Tripped up a bot, right? I, you That's know, not a canned response. But so what, what the bot does is just take the information that's already provided it mm -hmm. and couched it in a different intonation. It says, right. just a woman's haircut, comma, for now, period. Right. So it's just a very simple, and suddenly, that's answered the, the, the scheduler's question. Correct. It's like, oh, this is just a, a basic one. Just a woman's haircut, okay. okay. we don't have to dye the hair. We don't yeah. have to. We don't have to get you know. into a, a do, are we doing a Brazilian blowout, or what, what are we doing? Right. <laughs> it's just figured out. Right. So. And succinctly figured out. It's not. Like, yeah, it didn't take a lot of back and forth. So, so that's really interesting to me, mm -hmm. and it makes me wonder what's going on in that algorithm that that the um, that the the bot knew. You know, well, let me just restate the information I have. But if I do it more confidently, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just a woman's haircut. It was <laughs> yeah. just a woman's this haircut been told for to now. Right. And then, you know, and the, and the scheduler knew because the scheduler deals with all kinds of like busy people, that's humans. How, that's how that's like, oh, OK, so I'm not going to get a lot of information about, you know, which way to part the hair. I just need to schedule. How we about we pick to, 10 This person wants to come in. Yeah. They clearly want us on appointment. So let's book them. So I just think, you know, that's right. really interesting. Well, and, and you and I come from a space where. Um, and and to our listeners, a lot of chat bots have to live in the in the frame of something like email, or more more consistently like a messaging tool, like Facebook Messenger, for example. And it's tough to build a bot that will take information and then. Usually, what what especially when we build them, we're building canned responses to questions that we expect answers to right it's almost like they have to they have to type what we've set up or click it or engage with the bot so that the bot knows exactly how to respond whereas it we're this is a whole different thing on it on a voice call with a human they can say anything I mean, like, well i'd like to think i mean what you're saying is true but i'd like to think some of the nuances that we've been able to build into our bots have allowed people like just by using video mm. like for example we have a client um that uh is hiring a bunch of of employees mm -hmm. and they really you know we talked before about how it's it's so interesting how people won't you know the webmaster thinks i've stated this clearly right but mm -hmm. people missed it right you know for whatever reason no matter how large a font you put it in because yeah, they're perusing it, the website right, for right. a way they to just, engage that yeah. they want to engage yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah. Right. Yes. That, and that's that's something too. Although my son does do that when when he says, "Okay, Google, call grandma." Mm -hmm. Now, when when 
when we first did that, we had to say grandma's name. Right. But mm-hmm. now we can just say grandma. Right. At one point, we got the question, who is your grandma? Right. And yeah. we said, <laughs> we identified her. And then from now on, she knows. Yeah. And if you have a grandma. different grandma, that might be Mima or. Well, that would know. be Grammy. Grammy. So totally right? different. And, you yeah. can, and, you can, <laughs> and it can differentiate. But, um, but yeah, so, so, so Google has initiated the call and has gone through that. Um, but with the spot that I was talking about for the employer, right? Um, there, um, he was interviewing a lot of people that weren't understanding kind of the basic requirements of the job. Mm-hmm. And so what we did was we asked him to come up with some videos, some interviews with actual employees right. talking about how this job has fit into their lives. Mm-hmm. And that has been a big help. Okay. So now applicants are going to this bot, and the bot is saying, okay, do you, you know, this type of job has certain requirements. Let me go through those with you. Mm -hmm. What do you think about those? And then would you like to see how this fits into somebody's actual life? And we've got some videos. So you can, you know, and then depending on what question they pick, we play a different video. Oh, rad. Okay. But we don't have the technology that was just being demonstrated, although we will. Apparently, yeah, that will down be available. The I mean, they're going to be opening up a developer sandbox. Starting, today. yeah, starting to. in the summer. Right. So we'll yeah. probably have access. We'll probably be developing with it in maybe the fall. That's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I just think that the, the fact that machine learning and natural language, I mean, it's, it's at a point where you can have a candid conversation with it, as long as there are parameters for the, the, the bot needs a chore. It's not going to just chit chat about the weather with you, but, um, maybe someday, right? <laughs> like if you gave it all the, the you could, you yeah. could. Yeah. I mean, I mean you can chit chat about the weather. I think yeah. with Google home, I think Thomas has had long conversations. <laughs> I don't know what about, <laughs> but that's, that's the fun part about this space is that it's the intersection of computer and human communication and what we can accomplish with it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, well, we're up against a, a, a quick break here, okay. so we're going to be back um, with more stuff about Google Duplex and chat. And well, and then the second example is really is that's, that's the exciting one. So stay tuned. We'll be right. We'll be right back. All right. This Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge, so you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www. 365grandclub.com That's 365grandclub.com Get yours this week and join the club The 365 Grand Club This week, my name is Harley Mitchell Next week, I'm not sure yet Maybe I'll use your name You see, I'm a cyber criminal And I steal information that defines who you are Things like your driver's license number Your birth date Your home address Your office address Your social security number Your medical information Insurance cards Business licenses And if I can get it Your birth certificate If I can get one I can get the rest It's not personal It's just business Once I have your information I bundle it with other and I sell it. Not just once, but over and over and over and over and over. Due to recent massive data breaches, your personal information is now available for cyber criminals like Harley to buy and sell to their underworld counterparts for profit. Bad people with bad intentions hiding behind your identity. Don't be fooled and lock down your financial life. Use the professionals that Fortune 500 companies use. ID Shield and Legal Shield. 
It costs less and reaches further. Don't lock down your life. Call Andrea Wacker and get the right protection for the right problem. Andrea Wacker is your lady of justice. Call now at 719-243-3174. That's 719-243-3174. Listening to Success Radio USA at successradio.us. Success Radio USA is committed to helping you achieve a positive daily approach to your success each and every day. Thank you for listening. sure to follow our Facebook page. You can either find us at Success Radio USA or The Mad Marketing Show on Facebook. Um, you can tune into our shows live on Facebook Live or check them out as podcasts. We are also um, on Success Radio USA as a radio show and now on iHeartRadio, which is a pretty exciting thing. Mm-hmm. But um, feel free to visit successradio.us. Um, we invite you to register there for a free account where you can stream the show at your leisure. Um, or again, to Tune in on Facebook or find us where you get your podcasts. We are there. But today we have super fun news. We're talking about Google Duplex. We're talking about chatbots and AI communication with humans. And we've got a chatbot guru, Tom McClintock of Relationship Martech in studio with us today. And we're talking about... um, this intersection between humans and computers and how do we kind of tackle that as a, as for marketing purposes, but also how do we just tackle it for communication in general, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so before the break, we were listening to a clip from um, the Google announcement where it was a very standard conversation. It should have gone that way, right? It, it felt normal, right? Like you call the salon, mm-hmm. ask for a time, I need to book the appointment, the the, the, the bot or the Google duplex goes back and forth with the person that is answering the phone at the salon. They are able to determine a the little time. bit of a challenge, a small hiccup, small a small hiccup. problem that would have, I mean, a chat yeah. bot, it, it would have been devastating to a chat, but don't get me wrong. I mean, what that accomplished was pretty cool. Yeah. But this next conversation is really, That's right. that would have been a challenge for a human. <laughs> I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with some of the activity in this, in the first kind, but this next one that we're going to listen to right here, was uh, was mind blowing. So to to set it up, this is um, again the Google bot has been asked by um, the the person using it to book a reservation at a local restaurant, and that is what the chat bot is attempt not the chat bot in this case, but Google Duplex, much like a chat bot, is trying to do when it calls this restaurant. So we're gonna again we've got to yeah. It, right. it has some major challenges, but it's it's ultimately an incredible example of what is happening in this space. So um, our producer is going to show uh, the clip here, and we are ready to listen. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For 7 people? Um, it's for 4 people. 4 people when? Um, night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually we reserve for like after like 5 people. For, few, for people you can come. 
How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? Well, when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the 7th. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye. That. That is, was a real trial. That's insane. Like, if we break that down, there's a misunderstanding about the the date right off the get go. Right. She thinks that the the it, date is the number of people. Right. And the, no, it's for and it, and it doesn't even get hung up on that. Nope, it's for four people. Oh, we don't do reservations for four people. You know, like and it just the whole and the and the chatbot like or the Google Duplex finishes the conversation. It it just it determines to end the conversation, which is crazy. Oh, I got you. Thank you. Yeah, and that I think is the key. Again, just like we saw in the last appointment mm-hmm. uh, setting example at the hairstylist where the chat bot was able to answer the question by sort of resolutely saying, Mm -hmm. I just want a woman's haircut at this time. Um, Here, the guy says, okay, I gotcha. Which is a very colloquial expression to indicate that we're good, we're done. Yep. I have the information I need. You have the information you need. Right. You know, and now we can go on our way. Right. Which is, I think it's brilliant. It's it's incredible. And to, like, um, just for it to make those decisions on the fly, there is a lot of computer power going on behind that thing. Let's what be, happens, that and this really starts cool. to get into the ethics of, of chatbots, right. what happens when that computer power enables the bots to actually do it better than humans? Well, you know? <laughs> like that's the... I might have been tripped up there's on that a call. Whole, there's a whole... Weekend? What? <laughs> there's a whole podcast on just Wednesday. Ethic, right? Wednesday. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the way that some of us might have handled it, some of us might have gotten frustrated with her. Some right. of us might have said, well, y- you can't, you know, you're having... Clearly, my English and your English aren't lining up because she was clearly um, a second... English was not her native language. Right. She's, um, she's still running a business and still providing food that that person wanted to eat, but you, maybe we get frustrated. Maybe we can't get it figured out because humans get emotional. Google Duplex probably doesn't. you know. <laughs> like, right, but just knowing when to say, hey, I got you. Like, I, I realized... Uh, in my in my education that I would never make a very good politician hmm. because a good politician knows when to wink knows when to say hey I gotcha mm-hmm. knows when to say you know something kind of impassioned and I'm a little awkward and I kind of bumble around and people think oh that's just Tom McClintock so not really electable but uh, (laughs) but the problem with that is what happens when all of this computer power that you talk about right is you know really processing and really learning and really figuring out how to conversationally press the right buttons correct that's going to be something it's incredible and I think I think that's where, as marketers, we've got to maintain our finger on the pulse because that would be an inc- – imagine if you onboarded clients using Google Duplex. Right, yeah. Or if you scheduled sales appointments via Google Duplex or you handled inbound customer service calls. Via, I mean, like the, that's where our, us as marketers can really take, pay attention to this and say, how do we incorporate – this kind of scalability in our communication, because it's one thing to do it in chatbot. You're absolutely right. And I think that there is some of the pushback that we get from chatbots. The phone. Well, this is actually this still is, a chatbot. Oh, it's though, totally a chatbot. It's still but a it's, conversation. It's an, it's an audio chatbot yeah, versus a, voice. a text It's based. a smart speaker. It's a voice thing. But yeah. it's infinitely easier, I think, as humans for us to in, engage with voice. I personally, right? I mean, we are auditory visual creatures and we speak. And well, but you're kind of like a conversational right. guy. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people don't shy away know, from they that. They like right. to type. They do like they to like type. to that do. You know, type a quick phrase. Mm-hmm. You know, see you tonight, and put a smiley face. And right, that's emoji, it. emoji. But I just think, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like the ability, like if you think about how much of business, like if you're a salesperson. Mm-hmm. How much of your business is dependent on you just 
hunting down prospects. Right, just calling. You know, right? I was just I was just talking with with um, Christine Maynard, and oh. she's talking about how she she's a commercial realtor, mm-hmm. and she needs to find buildings for sale. Right. Like I never thought about that because I've never been a realtor, but but she spends a lot of her day looking for buildings that are for sale. What if she could put a, a chat bot that, right. on that? And then a you relentless. Know. I mean, it doesn't tire. It doesn't get emotional. It doesn't have a bad day. It, uh, you're sounding like the Terminator. Right. It won't stop. Right. Well, and that's, <laughs> now we get into the ethics question. Is it like, when does this become... When do the hairs on the back of our neck start to stand up? Some people, and some people listening are, are yeah. wigged, right? Yeah, like, some no people are there way. like, this is bad. Right, this is the end this, of the this beginning. This is Terminator. Right? Yeah. <laughs> or the beginning of the end. I flipped that around. Right, yeah, this is how they come for us right, down the road. Right, So, I mean, there are those questions. But then there are also kind of more simple ethics questions like, should the bot identify itself? Like, all of right. my chat bots, Identi- always, yes, they absolutely. always say, hi, I am, you know, Chloe. Mm-hmm. the chat bot or right. the bot but oh, you I'm, can do that better in text than you can here what if what if either of these in either, either of these two cases if the the Google duplex had identified itself as a bot they might have hung up on it right yeah they would have well they would have heard you're a bot what is that you know and gotten in there would have taken right, it three times sh- as long right and had a smaller chance of actually accomplishing the goal which was scheduling the right. appointments well and and to my you know like I've been called by robo dialers before oh yeah and you can usually if they're being disingenuous or but they're nowhere near as this I mean this was a whole different experience from my perspective did you hear so I think on Monday a Florida robo dialer got fined 120 million dollars no way it's a record fine yeah for robo dialing now mm-hmm. I'm not sure I don't know what the law is well, they were probably calling off uh, on the do not disturb list or you know reaching out to the wrong phone numbers uh, or doing I guess so I mean I think that stuff is so bad like I see to me that's the opposite of marketing right because mm-hmm. you're not identifying a likely prospect for your you're just right. it's not a proper target it's not it's not um, you're 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 blasting your message out to the and now 99 percent of the people that engage with you are not a good prospect anyway and you're defeating your your, your right in fact you know two of the main reasons why i got into online marketing in the 1990s spam and junk mail oh right yeah because i thought this is terrible marketing you know right and I, you know, if I would get this pile of mail, I'd come home late from work, I'd get this huge pile of mail, and I just put it in the second bedroom because right. I was and living by myself. And was I was one thing you needed, right, right? Yeah, and I was planned to go through it, but, but I thought, like, even a bill collector, like, I'm very available. Like, I've published my cell phone number, and I have an email address, and it wasn't too long before I was on LinkedIn and so forth. So I thought people should be able to find me when they need me and if they're just going to mail me stuff in a big pile of catalogs that's a dumb way to do it right and because of that I got really excited about online marketing the ability to narrow in yeah and that's what I think bots will do I think and I think that's an excellent excellent point well we're going to keep talking about bots and marketing and what it means to you after a quick break thank you so much all right right. It gives clarity to problem solving. It gives clarity to problem solving. It increases production and focus on the job. It alleviates sleepless and restless nights and fends off stress and tension headaches. No, it's not the latest energy drink or health supplement. It's Legal Shield. Get peace of mind every day, every night, now and forever. Legal Shield. Get it. To find out more about Legal Shield and how it can protect your family and your business, call Andrea at area code 719-243-3174. That's area code 719-243-3174. Legal Shield. (laughs) 
Is your business on Facebook? Are you frustrated with how your website performs? Do you have a focused and measurable marketing plan? Are you struggling in executing your marketing plan? Well, tune in every Tuesday to the Mad Marketing Show and learn from the people who are actually making it happen. The internet is a convoluted and busy place. Learn how to cut through the noise with the Mad Marketing Show. New episodes air every Tuesday on Success Radio USA at successradio.us. Find us on Facebook at Mad Crane Marketing and post your digital marketing questions. You can find us on SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, and iTunes by searching for Success Radio USA or The Mad Marketing Show. You can also visit us on the web at madcrane.com to learn more. Listening to the Mad Marketing Show. I am your host, Alex Belding. The Mad Marketing Show is brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, your awesome pass to downtown Colorado Springs. If you don't have one, get one today at 365grand.com. Um, it's also brought to you in part by Webrick Goes Mad. We offer a new solution to websites for small businesses so don't get frustrated with your diy tool go mad with webrick goes mad today we are talking about the awesome um, reveal that google duplex kind of provided this last week we have thomas mcclintock in the studio of relationship martech and we've been talking about um what chatbots mean what AI and, and just the human communication with computers means, and specifically what that means for, for marketing. So, um, Tom, what do you think is like the biggest way that we're going to see marketing and sales really adopt chatbots, or maybe already having well, adopted them? We started to get into that a moment ago, and right. I just think the possibilities, so we we're talking about you know, a commercial realtor that has to hunt mm-hmm. for buildings, mm-hmm. or, you know, how many of us have to you know, contact a long list of prospects to get, you know, one person that's qualified. Well, so now the bots are in a position of doing that. Right. And that's a tremendous, think about what we're going to do with the time that that frees up. Mm -hmm. So the bots and bots are not just talking to humans. They're cross platform. So they're researching databases. Mm -hmm. They're going into social media. They're, you know, they're really, they're accessing all the available data. Right. And more and more of that data is coming online all the time. So mm-hmm. if you look at the available data today, that doesn't really compare to the available data in six months or a year right. or two years. Mm-hmm. So if you think about those two trends coming together, bots getting smarter, data being more present. And more compiled and targeted, right. It's going to be unusual to have a job where you're not provided a stream of useful information Information already prepackaged to what you need. Mm-hmm. You know the, the the days for somebody to have to drive around the city to find buildings that are for sale right. are, coming are to not. An end. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to be for too long. And by the way, if your job has a script, that's a bad sign. That's a too. really bad. Yeah, that's something easy or to it, upload. It's, it's a not. good sign, though, if you jump on the bandwagon now. And put your 20 years of customer service experience to use in actually writing bots. Well, and this, you know, this is still a new place, especially for small business. I mean, the amount of people that are using automated chatbots, you know, it's like it's your Comcast or your power companies or, you know, it's it's much it's much larger companies right now. But I, I agree with you that this is coming into oh well no we're seeing small we're seeing a markets. lot of small businesses though adopting bots oh absolutely I'm not and the, and their numbers are rising but I think it's you're right it is coming it is something to engage with sooner than later right right yeah no I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't waste a lot of time um, but um, but I'm just I'm, I'm trying to envision what this world of a year or two from now is going to look like with all of these people having much more information than they've ever had. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about what the cell phone did in terms of helping 
helping connect people, making, you know, people complain, oh, you know, I can't leave my job. Right, now it follows I, me it home. It follows me home, mm-hmm. and I've got to work all the time. Well, you don't really have to work all the time. You could you can figure out right. how you're going to structure your day and what your boundaries are and so forth. Mm-hmm. But certainly, if you wanted to now, you could work all the time, right. whereas probably before, that would have been harder. Right. So if you think about how the cell phone has improved people's access to people. Right. And what that's done for the economy and mm-hmm. for productivity and innovation. Right. Well, now imagine what bots will do by improving people's access to information. Right. Which is what the internet really is. It's the it's, Exactly. It's a fascinating place for us to be and I think what what came out of Google Duplex this week was I didn't realize we were this far along. You know, like it's so fun to hear, especially that second conversation. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, right. (laughs) I mean, the bot decided to end the conversation. It determined that no more information could be gleaned, and it was pretty darn right. And it 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 terminated the conversation politely, but with the right with the right level of authority. Right. I mean, it was. You know, it it's pretty incredible. I yeah, think. no, it was it was definitely it was definitely an example of what what we're striving for in this field. Uh, but what are the ramifications for that once we once we get there? Yeah. And and so there are definitely there are there are some we talked about some ethics questions in the mm-hmm. last segment. Uh, now we're talking about employment and displacement issues right. yeah. oh, in this section. So I think we should be more prepared for it as a society than we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, that's why I've been I've been kind of talking a lot about bots. But but um, that's well, and just from a from my mean. perspective, it's it's really fun to watch people interact with the bots that we build, right, mm-hmm. and see how they use them and see how. The bot is answering good questions, you know, providing good information, and you're and you're having a conversation as a business with somebody. But again, it, you don't have to physically do it. Now to see that transmit into, you know, the actual outbound, because like right now with a with a messenger bot, it has to it can only say hey engage with me. It can't speak to you know like it asks for you to talk to it Mm -hmm. but now we have the opportunity to go out and push that conversation across a phone line I think that is a new thing that dovetailing with two other trends the Internet of Things right. and apps are are actually on the rise again, um, oh, which really? is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, I you know, I do a lot of work with associations, and mm-hmm. so in the context of that, I was asked to write an article for Associations Now, um, which is uh, for basically. Uh, professionals involved in in either trade or professional associations. Um, And we're talking about emerging trends, and one of the cases I looked at is Disney World in Orlando Mm -hmm. and how they came up with a magic band that is triangulated uh, based on sensors in the tables and in the ceiling oh, wow. and in the environment so that they can bring your pre-ordered food to you without ever having to seat you. Oh, wow. Like you show up yeah. and you're greeted with, oh, hello, it's, you know, the so-and-so family. You know, how are you? Happy birthday. You know, stuff like that. And then then you go to your table and then all the, the sandwiches and whatever that you ordered you know, when you booked right. the trip are oh, there. Well, they, they arrive shortly after you. Yeah. So what the, what that meant was, you know, customers had, you know, an even more amazing, more magical experience because right. they had forgotten that they were wearing these bands. Right. It was magic. It just yeah. happened. Yeah. It just happened. And it's, you know, they'd ask the question, but nobody answers. And then you're enjoying your food and it doesn't matter. Right. And so forth. But then on the other side, on Disney's side, they were able to see how where crowds were in the park Mm -hmm. and they could set up a spontaneous character parade around the corner if there were too many people that right, we were overtaxing out, right? an area, <laughs> yeah, it would lead them away. Oh, fascinating. So stuff like that. So there was there's that and then another uh, example I looked at was Starbucks. 
mm. is really getting into the Internet of Things because right. they're running some tests. They Right now, the employees, the baristas, have to check the temperature on not just the cold cases in the front, but the refrigerators in the back. Mm-hmm. And that's an ongoing thing. Well, why not have sensors right. report that data? Mm-hmm. And you can track that data over time and so forth. So they're doing that. And then, of course, their app has has really, um, you know, they, they went from a bad situation where they were using Square and people, baristas didn't know how to use Square. Mm. And eventually they parted company, Square and Starbucks. But now they have their own app and customers really like it. And they're loading up their their money in advance, and they're right. making their purchases. and And Starbucks actually reengineered how they were doing their production lines so that they didn't form a second kind of invisible line of people waiting for the stuff that they had pre ordered. Oh, interesting, and so forth. Yeah. So, so between apps, Internet of Things, and bots, right? We're we're seeing the world change. Right. Well, and and it's all about organizing and manipulating the data that we already have. I mean, and that's, I, again, I think that is what is so incredible about this is that these bots can make intelligent decisions with the data that they have, they have in their databases and have accessed throughout. And they can, with authority, speak to humans in a way that is responsive and polite and on message, I mean, both of those examples are something that really does open a curtain onto what is coming in terms of how we communicate. Well, it's interesting. You use the phrase with authority. And that, you, I think what you mean is with confidence. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also interesting to note that when people talk to a bot and they know they're talking to a bot, mm-hmm. Their language changes, right? Or they get louder, like they act like they, they turn into your mom talking to a foreigner, right? Like I said, I would, you know, they change their behavior. Well, some, I mean, some of it is first-time users or something, Correct. but yeah. but a more experienced user knows, hey, I'm talking to a bot. I don't need to do small talk. I don't mm-hmm. actually need to be polite. Right. Um, not that you're, you know, really rude to your Alexa or whatever. Right. But, but it's you more don't, commanding. It's, right. it's more, um, it's just more uh, practical. Right. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. hey, I want to know movie times for this movie yeah. on this date. You're an information seeker. Figure it out. Yeah. Right. It's just like with Google, the Google search box. Right. You're not saying, oh, I'm so happy to be able to talk to you today. I was wondering if you could tell me what the weather is. How is your day going? Yeah. Would you please, <laughs> if you don't mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. don't need to do all that. So it's much faster. Right. And and so and I'm thinking also too some of the some of the statistics are coming back saying how people like to they'd rather talk to a bot um than a salesperson. Oh, you interesting. Know, with that, you know there's perceived anim- anonymity which is not really true. Mm-hmm. And and then there's certainly speed. So just being able to say, hey, I can skip all the small talk. I can find out what it really takes to, you know, conduct this transaction that I'm thinking about. Right. And I don't have to be chit chatty or friendly or or, you know, I can if the bot asks me a question I don't want to answer, I can just say I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to feel awkward about that. Right. So there's that um, there's that innovation, uh, too, about talking with bots and I'm really excited how information is going to begin to flow oh it's really in exciting a bigger way than ever well as always it's a blast having you on the show Tom thank you really thank, thank you, you for much. joining us here today um, you've been listening to the mad marketing show you can find us by going to success radio USA on Facebook um, we can you can also find our show at the web um, success radio.us feel free to register there for free you'll get an ebook as a reward and be able to follow the show via the website. You can also find us as a podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. And we are now a radio show on iHeartRadio. So be sure to search for The Mad Marketing Show when you are looking for your podcast or radio to digest. Thank you so much for liking us, following us, and engaging with us on Facebook. Have a mad, mad day. Thank you.
You have been listening to the Mad Marketing Show on Success Radio USA with host Alex Belli. Brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. So start enjoying the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by going to 365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. God bless you and see you all next week on the Mad Marketing Show right here on Success Radio USA. Hey!